All right, welcome to the IBEX 101 training provided by the Cloud Supercomputing Core Lab. Um, what is KSL and what is our mission and goal? So uh, we are one of the 10 core labs uh, and we provide the state of the art supercomputing facilities, training and services to the cost community from student, faculty and researchers, as well as serving the needs for supercomputing in the kingdom. Our goal is to become a world-class reference uh, of supercomputing uh, in the kingdom uh, and shining and providing all these services to our users at Kaust and the kingdom. So what are supercomputing services that we are offering? First, we have the infrastructure. So that is basically two major facilities, the Shaheen Leadership Supercomputer and the IBEX cluster that we will be talking about today. We also provide an expertise through our scientists and engineers uh, on campus. Um, so in the lab, we have a variety of expertise ranging from domain science like computational biology, uh, computational fluid dynamics and computational chemistry to fundamental computer science, uh, focusing on parallel computing and high performance. So we provide various services, computing cycles in our infrastructures, consultancy services on different projects, our education and training program that is part of it today, uh, our training here, uh, and we offer a lot more, including workshops with our uh, partners. Uh, building community, uh, such as planning events like the Saudi HPC in 2017 and we, in 2012, even earlier, uh, and to bond between the HPC and scientific community within the kingdom. And finally, we provide value added services, and those are new uh, capabilities that we offer to our users to be modern and following the best practices worldwide. So, in today's training, uh, we're going to go through an overview of the IBEX cluster from architecture point of view. Um, we're going to look at the software environment uh, at IBEX, how to log in, how to load modules and software, and how to run a job. Uh, how to run a job will be even further uh, detailed in the next section on the job submission scripts, how to write those and how to submit them to the job scheduler. And finally, we'll go through some of the best practices, our documentation and how to get support from our team. Uh, we will close with an open discussion uh, and we will open up also for a clinic following up this training where you could um, book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with our, our scientists uh, to get your problem or your inquiry resolved. So let's get started. So the first section, as I mentioned, is an overview of the hardware architecture of the cluster. Um, so I'm Saber Fiki, the scientist lead at this KSL, and we'll go through some of these architectural point of view of IBEX. So from a cartoonic perspective, if you look at the abstraction of a supercomputer, what you see there uh, is mainly a large pool of compute nodes. Those in IBEX are the variety of CPUs, GPUs, large memory nodes, uh, and then a pool of storage servers uh, that provide different capability and different storage capacities and performance. And then to interact with that, you have a scheduler that is a piece of software that orchestrate all the jobs that are submitted by the users. Uh, how to submit those jobs are uh, done but through these nodes that we call the login nodes. So that's where you get into the IBEX cluster. Your first contact with the cluster is through these uh, login nodes where you find the app stack and interact with the scheduler to submit your jobs. For the data management and movement from outside and internally with from different storage services, uh, you could use a data mover uh, that is available also through uh, our capabilities and infrastructure. So let's dig deeper into IBEX. So IBEX is a, a collection of a variety of nodes uh, that is periodically upgraded almost every year, we put additional resources, and that varies uh, in architecture to serve different purposes. The first 
compute nodes is the Intel uh, and AMD CPU nodes. So from Intel perspective, the latest and greatest ones that we have are the Skylake and Cascade Lake nodes. Those, each of these nodes have 50, 40 cores each and 384 gigabytes of memory. So that's substantial. We have nearly 100 plus of each category. And then we have some of the old SMC computing nodes from Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, still operational and providing decent performance uh, to some extent. But those will be decommissioned as we refresh this cluster. Talking about the refresh, uh, the latest refresh that we are putting in place uh, is the AMD nodes that are coming up soon. So those are the nearly 100 or more AMD ROM nodes, the latest uh, architecture from AMD. And those are 128 cores each. So that's a lot of cores in a single node. Um, the CPU there is a 64 cores. We have a dual socket and a total of half a terabytes of memory. So that's gigantic. And that helps a lot various workloads, specifically the computational biology community that requires a lot of memory. Uh, talking about memory, uh, we have also, if you look here, uh, a large uh, memory nodes uh, that are available if, if a half terabyte is not enough. Some of the workloads require up to three terabytes and we have those available as well in the cluster. Uh, we have 18 of them today and uh, four are additional ones are in the installation phase. So those are the computing CPU uh, nodes. Now look at the GPUs. We have uh, a large, uh, fairly sizable GPU capability in the cluster uh, that varies from different generations and from different purposes. Uh, we have some P100, 1080 Ti's and 2080 Ti's. Uh, so those are useful for scientific computing, but also for AI. But the latest and greatest one are the, we have are the Voltas V100s. We have 272 of those, uh, several few nodes with four GPUs uh, configurations on per node. And the majority of them are actually at 30 nodes uh, with eight GPUs configurations. Uh, each GPU is equipped with 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory, HBM. Uh, that's fairly sizable and solve a lot of problems, specifically in AI. Uh, but also we have 768 gigabytes of memory. That's quite sizable, typically more than the double of the GPU memories aggregated. Uh, besides, we have even local storage with SSDs that where we host the main uh, data sets that are mostly used by the AI community, like ImageNet and so on. So all these compute nodes are tightly connected with uh, 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 to a storage systems. So the storage system where you save your data, okay? Um, so if we look what we have here, uh, we have some previous uh, systems from the Scratch Intel that we have from SMC before. It's soon to be decommissioned uh, as it gets old. Uh, we have a fast scratch based on SSD technology for the high performance of IO, specifically IOPS, the number of IO operation per second. Obviously, your home directory is there, uh, and you have we have sizable capacity for uh, lots and lots of users that we have today. And then the the scratch and project space are mainly in a BGFS parallel file system with a total capacity of four petabytes. So that's our main. Uh, storage system for the scientific data. So the scratch is nearly 2.3 petabyte and project is 1.7. And there are plans for increase and improvement uh, in the capacity uh, moving forward. Additionally, we are planning new storages for encrypted data. So that's uh, in deployment phase. And those are necessary for uh, projects like using human genomes, uh, or sensitive data that needs to be encrypted. So how to glue this together? Uh, we, we, we have a very high speed interconnect that uh, connect all these nodes and storages all together using the InfiniBand HDR director switch that we have. It's, it's a massive one that has 800 ports at 200 gigabits per second. Uh, currently we use it with the computing nodes at HDR 100 with 100 gigabits per second each. 
uh, so each port serves two nodes. Uh, but it's a single switch, so we have a full connectivity to all the IBEX component, from compute to storage, uh, seamlessly. And that increased significantly the performance of I.O. and communication between nodes uh, from the previous network that we have at 40 gigabits per second. So uh, we, we've seen that even in benchmarks of applications and I.O. benchmarks. Of course, we have Ethernet connectivity for the admin network, connectivity to the campus and the World Wide Web. So thank you all for uh, your attention on this uh, overview of the IBEX hardware architecture and hope you will benefit from that and get at least a first understanding of the cluster. And now we will dig deep dive uh, on the IBEX software ecosystem and see how that environment works for you to get your scientific computing done on IBEX. Thank you. And I give the floor to the next speaker.